Atheist Nomads, episode 168, live from the Streamathon with Al and Astrid from Inciting Incident. The podcast you're about to listen to includes cursing and talking about hoo haws. Please be advised. We are the Atheist Nomads, bringing you history, science, politics, religion, and interviews with leaders in the atheist community. Not all those who wander are lost. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. I am Dustin. We're taking another break this week. So you get the audio from one of the, the really fun hours during the streamathon that we did a couple weeks ago, raising money for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's Light the Night Walk. Uh, thanks to the streamathon, I actually came in 43rd place for most. Uh, money raised per person, and didn't quite make it to my goal of 666 at $666. And we also helped get the Treasure Valley Coalition of Reason team up to 19th place for the friends and family type teams, the non-corporate teams. So thank you all very much for that, and I I hope you enjoy uh, today's show. Atheist Nomads is proudly brought to you by Archway Hosting. Check out their low price, full featured hosting solutions at archwayhosting.com. That's A R C H W A Y hosting.com. Hey, we're also brought to you by listeners just like you. Find out how you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash atheist nomads. That's P A T R E O N dot com forward slash atheist nomads. Wow, I was going for being drunk throughout the entire time, but I, I excuse me, buzzed through the entire time, but I think I passed that. You missed. And Lauren is trying to put her, 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 uh, what's the word for those, Lauren? Action figures. Action figures that I knocked over down. <laughs> they fell down when I was going through them and they were back. She got Don't them back up. Toys, She's telling me water, no more beer. We are now joined by Al and his guest, Astrid, from Inciting Incident. Welcome to the Streamathon. Excellent. Thank you for having us. I'm terribly sorry that you thought raising money would help by having us on, so uh, yeah. thanks for having us anyway. <laughs> so how's it been going so far? Uh, what, you guys about six hours in now? Uh, five. five. Five, yes. We're on our sixth yep. hour raising money for Light the Night. At atheistnomads.com slash live. Oh, we are more than happy to participate. Uh, you know, we're we're a podcast that not only takes up causes, but supports a lot of them, too. I mean, yeah. I we support a lot of people on Patreon, and anytime there's some kind of fundraiser, we'll do it. We just did uh, Vulgarity for Charity, and we're happy to help <laughs> with this. We'll make a contribution. How did I miss that? Here. It's part of Noah's stuff. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I mean, come on. That's no, that's great. Yeah. Well, I mean, you just say the no, name. No, sorry, fucking great. <laughs> you just say the name of the thing. You just kind of have to assume that Noah's part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so what you guys up to? Um, what are you doing? Not much right now. Just uh, you know, we we blocked out this time to participate with you guys and. Uh, you know, we're we're recorded out for several weeks, so we've been doing a few on delay. But, you know, the show's been going really well. Uh, we, we'll have our 60th episode next week. So, you know, not quite as far along as you guys are, but we're getting there. Sure, sure, sure. Man. Your best. <laughs> I, I have just now started for the first time having my... Uh, uh, episodes planned out or actually recorded for a few weeks in advance. Never realized how relaxing it was. Wow. Right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> we we used to do ours live, and we also used to do it twice a week. So we we would have to plan things around. Oh God, where's everybody going to be at seven p.m.? But now, you know, we we record in advance. I mean, we went down to see Andrew Torres a couple of weeks ago in Baltimore. He met up with us in person, and we had we recorded two episodes. So it was like, damn, what the hell are we going to do for two weeks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, live production could be like 
a little bit of a drug in some cases. I mean, just recording day of, got to get, or either live streaming, either at right to the studio or like immediately thereafter. Just the, the minute, at any moment, anything could fucking break at any time. <laughs> it gets to me. And then when I finally stopped being on the air and like for the first two or three weeks where we were podcast only, I'm like, Am I doing everything right? Like every, everything's going so smoothly. I like, <laughs> something's got to be wrong. I mean, in my studio at home, I've got a, a Linksys router up on the wall with a sign on it that says, "I took Ask an Atheist off the air." Is yeah, it, he shamed the router. I, I router shame. <laughs> it's kind of cute. Dude, we have set, we have had so many technical difficulties with our podcast at times that we affectionately call it the Technical Difficulties Podcast. <laughs> I, uh, I I interviewed Tim O'Neill from History for Atheists, and <laughs> yeah, we recorded what had to be like a two-hour interview, and then Google decided they didn't want me to have it and waited four hours. To, it, it, it kept saying we're still on live, and we weren't. And yeah. then when it finally processed, it took all of two minutes and 43 seconds, so we had to re-record. And, you know, that's oh, always wow. easy to schedule with someone from Australia. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. I remember one of the first ones we had overseas. This would have been in the, our teens of episodes. We had an interview with an Australian. My nephew had just over D- OD'd on oh, heroin. God. Yeah, that was the episode I did by myself. Yep. The first yeah. one you did like that. Yeah. That was crazy. Well, you know, I got it handled. She was really cool, and we talked about uh, a uh, sexual thing of mine that I wanted to have uh, one small person standing on the shoulders of another small person. <laughs> and on. also the bombing of <laughs> yes, Japan. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you know, just you know, you you know, kiss and you know, get a tight handful of hair there, and then you know, just get a blowjob at the same time. Yeah. Wow. Have any of your people ever asked for that? Honestly, like, no. I'm a little bit surprised. So you guys probably are you don't a little bit little. I am because why would you? But listeners of our show know that I used to be a pro, so it's very very rare for me to hear. A kink that I have not been asked for yet. Hmm. <laughs> Thumbs up, cheers! I salute you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, what kind of pro are you talking about again? Huh? What kind of what pro kind are you of talking about? Pro. Oh, oh, you said pro. you were a pro. Um, yeah, I used to be like a pro dom and an escort. Oh, oh nice! Wow. Yeah. I, I don't consider myself a pro dom; just a dom. I never got paid or anything like that, or nobody ever asked for it. I am a meat popsicle. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because, like, in my personal life, I am, like, in my personal sexual life, when I have sex for fun, sure. um, I'm a total sub. I'm, I'm not yeah. a dom at all. Cool, cool. This way. And this is, of course, on the rare occasion where you're not asexual. Yeah. So. <laughs> Having sex for money kind of like ruins the appeal of sex a little bit. Hmm. Really? I think it'll make it better. Like, I get to do this and get money? Fuck <laughs> yeah. You know, I've never seen you weld on your off hours. <laughs> Like putting that out there because I don't have a welding machine. <laughs> what if you could combine sex work and welding? That'd be fun. I would like to try. Yeah, you could, well, you could uh, bring a whole new, ter- whole new meaning to the term bricklayers. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that oh. sounds like a challenge. I'm gonna have to figure this shit out. Yeah, if you want a bricklayer, that's gonna be an extra twenty five bucks. Uh, twenty five. You get a brick in her mouth. What? <laughs> I don't know if I could do that. I'm actually quite small. How like, how small? Are, how short are you? I am like five three and a half. Yeah. Okay. You're about. You're, about my... you're the tallest woman on our show. What are you talking about? <laughs> Touche. Touche. Yeah. How, how short are you? Oh, I'm. Uh, our other female co-host Heather is four foot nine and eighty pounds. She is the tiniest. Thing. Wow! <laughs> sure, sure, sure. There's a great picture of us when we met up in in person for the first time. It was me, her, and Brian. And then, you know, Brian's about five nine. 
I'm 6'3", and then there's Heather. <laughs> <laughs> so it looked like the ascent of man height chart, just you know, <laughs> slowly going up from the crouching position. It was fantastic. <laughs> nice. Uh, oh, boy. Wow. The reason we got to know each other was because you were telling me some of those stories, and it was like, this would be fascinating to talk about on a podcast. Yeah. And we did t- two different times, although you had your um, a- awesome roommate on for one of them. But... <laughs> Fuck you, Carl. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> there were just so many stories just sitting listening to you talk that I, I just said, this is phenomenal, and I would have no idea this was a thing. <laughs> like, t- <laughs> tell one of your classics, please. Oh yes, please. I don't know what what what's the topic uh, of your pro stories. You know, uh, weird things people have asked for, like the kidnapping people. <laughs> um, that that story is actually uh, my old roommates, but um... who cares? You can take credit for it. <laughs> She would lose her shit, but um, there are actually like quite a lot of people who have fantasies about like getting kidnapped. Mm. So me and my friends, like as a result, have just perpetually joking about like agreeing to it, and then they actually do fucking get kidnapped. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and they're just going along with it, thinking it's this awesome, sexy thing. I wonder how long it take for them to realize they're actually in trouble. <laughs> There's a screenplay in that. Right? That's Man. a good idea. <laughs> you know, um, one of our other roommates actually discussed this, you know? You're supposed to be writing this screenplay, sir. I love it. I love it. I will do that. Just, <laughs> you, you can picture it, too. Just like the guy going along with everything, being like, oh, yeah, that's what I'm supposed to do. This is kind of hot. And then, like, they're robbing a bank or something. Yeah, I'm just firing blanks. Oh, that, that's a lot of blood. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is a really detailed fantasy. Totally here. going Kudos. along with it. And I can, I, can, I can kind of block the shot already where they're like, yeah, I didn't give in to your, uh, your demands. So we're going to have to take your picky finger and <laughs> shouting the safe word over and over and over again as the meat cleaver and the blowtorch come out. And, and if, if you're watching boom. this, if you're one of the seven, please keep in mind this is an adult streamathon. Yeah. All oh, right. We're on a streamathon. Shit. That's right. <laughs> we're raising money for leukemia by talking about sex stories. I mean, that's pretty fantastic. They say sex sells. Leukemia Literally. and lymphoma. <laughs> Man, if I get a telegraph to my 12-year-old self, I would like, just keep doing what you're doing. Everything's fine. Yeah, a streamathon raising money for cancer talking about crazy sex stuff. Yeah. Hell yeah. Honestly, I'm shit. down for this. For every like $50 donation that goes <laughs> that gets um given while I'm on air, I will tell you a new crazy sex story. Okay. okay. $50 that's donated, Alex will take off a piece of clothing. That oh. sets the, the bar. Wouldn't that be because incentive to like ask you guys for money? I mean, we were just that. <laughs> see all it's we're giving hard. out we is with the reverse, and like every fifty dollars, we'll just have you put on put on another piece of clothing. There we go. <laughs> that is more logical. <laughs> and because all we're giving out is is copies of. The story of God oh. from Chris Matheson. Oh, that's phenomenal. The dude fucking wrote Bill and Ted's. Like, yeah. yeah. Co-wrote it. Yeah. I've been listening to a lot of his appearances. I, I, I can't wait to read that book. Well. Donate the top amount, and <laughs> you are guaranteed a copy. First person to $50, which is Meredith, bucks. gets a copy. Uh, wait, wait, no, no. That was Chris Tanner. He gets a copy. And two random so Astrid, people past that get a copy. So, Astrid, in your experience, have you found that uh, more powerful people in their daily lives like to be uh, manhandled more and treated more like shit? Yeah, um, which, like, I personally get. Like, I can totally explain it from a subjective perspective when you are the type of person that's constantly in control if you're like just an uptight asshole like i am like most of my clients were 
then you just really want to fucking let go. You want to yeah. not have to make decisions and just not be in charge for a little while because that doesn't fucking happen in your day-to-day <laughs> life. It just doesn't. So it's it's like a very extreme version of catharsis to be able to just like surrender control of your fucking body and know everything will be fine. The world's not going to burn to the ground when you do it. Hmm. Fair enough. Kind of had that feeling. Yeah. Mm. I'm donating money right now, what? so you <laughs> should be too. <laughs> Everyone I should be fifty sixty nine. So deal with it. <laughs> oh boy! All right. I am in no way a sex worker, but I've seen some pretty phenomenal things myself. Uh, my favorite was the cunt punt incident. Um, <laughs> I got I was hanging out with this couple, and they took me to like this fetish house without telling me that's where we were going. Nice. And outside was this woman almost as tall as me dressed like an Amazon, having people line up and literally punt her right in the crotch. <laughs> and she was, she had to be six feet, maybe two fifty. So, I mean, she wasn't, she wasn't small and I'm just sitting there looking, going, She'd rip my leg off if I tried to do that, even if she's asking for it. No way. No way. Not going to happen. Six feet tall in her camisole. Knock you to your knees. That a song? Cameo. No. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, boy. Okay. So where are you from, Astrid? Because Alex fucking left. (laughs) No, I'm right here. I'm just doing it. (laughs) We're we're going to start with a guy. I was born near Atlanta, grew up in North Carolina, and then I haven't stayed put for very long since then. Mm -hmm. Been all over the country. Would you call yourself an actual atheist? Um, I feel like the term atheism doesn't doesn't properly Mm -hmm. capture how fucking furious I am at just, like, the concept of God. So, like... Atheist or anti-theist, one of those. I consider myself both, but a lot of other things. Yeah. Atheist, agnostic, secular humanist with hedonistic tendencies. Yeah. And, oh, I'm a member of the uh, the Satanic Temple also. That's awesome. They are the greatest yeah. trolls of all time. It's yeah. amazing. No, don't call them a troll. They'll get on your case, man. <laughs> I mean that in the most affectionate of ways. No, I, I have a feeling like you and I might agree on that one. I totally meant it. Like, I, uh, I was met, talking met to... The best possible what, way. I, I am so shit at names. Uh, for somebody who does a podcast, you think I remember fucking names. Um, uh, Lucian Greaves. I was in her, and I said, yeah. so is this, is this you know... I, I said something like a question about it being a troll, and he goes, we're not trolls. And I go, oh god, I just... Man, what did I just call you? Yeah, it's 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 for me. Trolling is a you know early internet trolling is an art form type stuff. It's, totally, it's uh, a modest proposal. It's that sort of thing, and uh, <laughs> that, that's not what people think anymore. So I've stopped using the term. I I personally embrace the the term. Them's fighting words. Oh, holy shit! You guys are alive. Hey. Yeah, hey. I got back. Um, I had to go get some pizza. Okay. Some buy one get some free pizza. Fucking hey, hey. Yeah, uh, instant message me a, a slice of pizza. Okay, uh, we got memos coming, dude. Pizza emoticon pizza send. <laughs> I got chicken parmesan and bacon and pineapple. Man, if you guys didn't come back, I was gonna start talking about my fat life. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> don't want that now, do we? <laughs> no, actually, we do. I'm interested. Unless it's, uh, unless it's duly topical. Oh, it is. We've been, that's it pretty is. much all we've been talking about. Yeah. <laughs> sex, sex and boning, totally. That's all. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I don't know how Dustin has been doing. He's, he says he's doing good. All right. Good, good. All right. I just donated. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and... Yeah, now I feel bad. You're like smoking like nothing. I feel bad. I want to make you some juice. 
that's so sweet. I'm especially bitter about it because, like, I was in Seattle, like, four fucking days ago. What? I was having so much fun. I was so stoned <laughs> the entire fucking time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we got vape pens, like, within al- almost arm's reach of just, like, good quality, good quality weed. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, holy crap, Al. 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 However you want to go by. I didn't. I missed the Al's introduction. Fine. Al, thank you for being so generous. Absolutely. What did you do? I donated a hundred dollars. Holy! No! We have uh, a new new we book winner. winner. That's we for sure. Are. Yay! <laughs> I just get really. Fuck. I mean, I oh, just donated wow. to <laughs> That is, if nobody else beats that. Oh, Good job, Al. Just- <laughs> well, it is his job to make you lose. I mean, you gotta you gotta understand how this works. <laughs> It's kind of what the goal is. I just really wanted the book. I won't lie. And <laughs> yeah, of course, it looks like a cool book. I'll yeah. pay two hundred dollars for the book. And of course, how it goes for me when you're drinking, you've got a the alcohol competing with a chemical in your brain that tells your kidneys to hold under water. So you get up and you move around, and then you come back and sit down. And it's like, uh, no, it's time to pee. Whoops. Yeah, what you want table. is a trucker catheter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's basically a bag and a rubber band. I can probably figure it out. Those are two <laughs> words I've never heard put together before. Interesting. Uh, we call them um, trucker bombs. When you see a, a <laughs> bottle on the side of the highway that's full of yellow liquid. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's disgusting. I, I, I mean, I've only that drank movie. one a couple times. It didn't taste very good, so... Yeah. Yeah. I actually have friends who are truckers, cool people, and they they put it quite nicely. Um, truck bombs are way, way less disgusting than having a UTI in a truck. So pick your battles. <laughs> Absolutely. One affects one person, one affects many. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's. I think it's also relative discomfort. I think might have. I mean, there's got to be some sort of calc like equation that can be here. It's like uh, a, a million people get a hangnail, one person gets m- murdered by a vegetable peeler. I think I'm gonna opt for the hangnail. Mur- I would as well. Murdered by a vegetable peeler. Yeah, I was trying to think. I was trying to scale up what a hangnail would be like. <laughs> I mean, does this happen in the second or the third act of the f- fake kidnap? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that has to work in somehow, right? <laughs> it's, it's all so part boring, of Sam's you know? new play. <laughs> because oh, if man. this is a real kidnapper, hey. they're not going to do it fast, too. They'll just be like on the floor. I'm going. Yeah. I'm, since she left, done. Uh, yeah. And, you know, the, the, the idiot will still be like, oh my God, I didn't know I was into this. This is so hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never have to shave again. <laughs> is you work in a scene where <laughs> no. are, like, doing some small penis humiliation on the boner like ew that's so disgusting why the fuck are you doing that right now and it just makes it more hard <laughs> it, it's gotta happen yeah, and uh, that has to be part of the appealing, uh, too, because yeah, uh, yeah. uh, maybe the guy's uncircumcised, so, you know, that's kind of gross. Just, yeah. yeah, just don't go backwards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that sounds rather unappealing. Person. For the record, my cringing over here is not at uncircumcised dicks. My cringing is at the idea of circumcising with a vegetable peeler. Right. Oh, Good yeah, disclaimer. No, no, no. Good disclaimer. Oh, wow. We were judging you harshly. Now we. Now you are yeah. forgiven. So yeah, it, is, is it weird I, the I fact was participating in said judging? <laughs> is it weird that when doing the streamathon with a pro dom that while waiting for food I sit down and all of a sudden I have to pee? No, no but you do seem to be no. particularly obsessed with talking about it. <laughs> well, we were talking about trucker bombs, so she uh, telepathically yeah. willed you to do it. Um, oh. Yeah, wow. that's- that's part of the process yep. is uh, mind control. That's what I've heard. Yeah, definitely. See, you've been selected, Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> Win the prize. Mm. Mm. <laughs> but I'm not a pro dom anymore. I've like given that up. I don't have the energy for it right now. And the sex worker community as a whole is very, very 
particular about people who are not currently in the profession claiming the title. Fair so enough. I am an ex-pro. So one thing mm. I, I heard on the most recent episode of the Savage Love cast, I think it was the most recent one, it might have been the one before that, was that the the whole thing on on actually legalizing prostitution and sex work would have the disadvantage of what Mistress Matisse in Seattle, when she went to Nevada and tried it out, she actually had to register with the sheriff's department, which meant that she would actually be on a public document that would be subjected to the Freedom of Information Act. And just decriminalizing would be the best way to handle all of it, not legalizing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, another, like, a harsh reality of criminalization is that, like, cops are our worst fucking enemy. And it's not just getting arrested. Like, it's really not. I get that it's a crime. Whatever. Crime is fun. <laughs> <laughs> Cops, um, they have the ability to, like, rape us and get away with it and, like, actually stalk us so that they can catch us in the act and arrest us. Or, I don't know, like, one of my friends um, was forced to cuddle with a cop, like, all night to avoid getting arrested. Didn't even have sex. The cop just wanted to cuddle. Wow. So when you tell a bunch of sex workers, like, hey, so we're going to make this legal. We're just going to have you register with the cops first. Why the fuck would we want that when you can decriminalize it and we can continue, you know, paying our taxes, which is a thing we fucking do. A lot of people think we don't. Um, We can continue paying our taxes without cops terrorizing us. Well, and one of the other things brought up on that Savage Love episode with Mr. Smithies was that the fact that 60% some recent year, the sex workers actually sent to prison were sent to prison when they went to the police to report an actual victim type crime. And while reporting that, they got arrested and tried and sent to prison. Oh, my God. Yeah. um, Okay. That's a really, really common story. And one of the main reasons why, like, we just don't report crimes. We, We don't. We don't call the cops. It's not worth the risk. So, uh, while we're having fun there with that story, um, I do believe you made a promise about donations, and I donated twice the amount requested, so we should get two fantastic stories. Yes. Okay. Um, Okay, so the first one that comes to mind um, is a man who I will refer to as Miss Piggy. Now, Miss Piggy... (laughs) Miss Piggy was not actually my client. Miss Piggy had a sissy kink and was my former roommate's client. You should probably explain what sissy kink is. Oh, okay. There are people who are vanilla. That's that's right. Okay, so sissification. This is going to come off like kink shaming, and it is. Sissification <laughs> is a fetish for female supremacy. It's basically wanting... You experience misogyny to get your rocks off. You um, are forced to dress like a woman, and then you get told a bunch of like misogynistic crap, and that makes you hard. Or For a man, to- a man to go through all that. For a man, it is it is a men's kink. I, I, I okay. take I take it it's mostly the cat calling and the derogatory slut shaming, not the yeah you make seventy cents on the dollar. <laughs> yeah, it's like um, mm, institutionalized like, sexism. Yeah, yeah, it's like calling that. them like fat bitches, fat sluts, etc. Telling it's them they're shekels for you. <laughs> yeah, like disgusting. <laughs> Poor, you're not good enough to kiss my feet. You're disgusting. Pretty much like all of the shit that like teenage girls like tell themselves in their head when they have low self esteem. That's what gets these guys off. Okay. Right. 
I that's think that's up. when they've reached the next level of uh, porn interest. Like, you know, when the regular stuff doesn't get to them anymore, they find the stuff that's clearly made for men with women doing that to them. Yeah. So they're, they're trying. I've, I've noticed from a lot of your stories that it's usually men trying to reenact what they've seen in porn as if those are real events. Yeah, kind of. And when I said messed up, I meant in a sex positive if that's your kink and you're doing it consensually, that's just fine kind of way. Oh, totally. <laughs> but it's still messed up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there's one. Um, or did you actually tell the specific that, that story? Was, that was not a story. Yeah, that wasn't a story. That was, that was just story. explaining the kink. So, yeah. all right, Miss Piggy. <laughs> so, um, I am just, like, chilling out in my room. Um, and I receive a text from my roommate. Hey, do you want to come talk shit to this dude for like 10 minutes and you'll receive X amount of money? I was like, sure. Why not? So, um, me and our other roommate end up both doing it. We just walk in and I like planned it out in my head. I thought it was so cool. I just like cracked up and I was like, where's the dick at? I thought I was supposed to come in here and humiliate one, but I can't fucking see it. (laughs) And so, um, keep going, I, keep going. No. <laughs> so I, um, I take my my little crop and I just like whip his legs open and I'm acting like I can't find it. And it's just this like fat dude who looks a little bit like my dad did, but wearing this like awful like old blonde wig that like hasn't been washed in fucking forever we it was no longer cute to wear and so we just said "Eh, we'll save it for the sissies (laughs) and oh my god i have never in my life seen somebody so happy to be called miss piggy like he would legitimately like snort like snort giggle like it was absurd but, um, I ended up, like, flogging his, um, inner thigh so hard that he sharded a little. Oh, my. And oh, I, wow. I, just left. I was like, dear Rumi, this is all you. My ten minutes are up. So, I have to say this is the best, uh, application to the disclaimer we have at the start of our show, which I will play again. <laughs> You know, before you do your second one, I have another one. Okay. So that very same night of the cunt punt, um, someone, it was someone's birthday and their, it was either their girlfriend or their mistress, whatever, wanted to surprise them. Uh, They strapped him to this board and like made everybody that was in the building come watch. And keep in mind, I had no warning that this is what we were going to do with our Saturday night. So I'm sitting in a house in Baltimore. You know, I know two people out of probably 30. And I'm watching this man get strapped down while two probably 50s aged mistresses do what they're doing. And it lasts for like a half hour. But then the part that actually made me get up and go, okay, I'm done, is they did what's called figging. (laughs) Um, For for the uninitiated, that is, it involves a ginger root in your ass. And, yeah, once I saw that, I said, I'm I'm out. I'm out. Good game, everybody. I'm done. (laughs) (laughs) I will now never be able to unsee that. Thank you very much. I mean, once again, if that's your thing, good for you. I just was not, I did not consent to see that. I had no interest in seeing that. I felt violated. And you'll never be able to eat sushi the same again. (laughs) That's true. Speaking of butt stuff and never being able to look at shit the same way again. That is my favorite transition of all time. (laughs) A phrase I hear a lot. Um, so when I was like first starting out, right, and I was like young, um, probably like eighteen, nineteen. Um, I I was still figuring things out. I really didn't know too much about the business. Pretty much nobody does when they first start 
And this to this day, it's still the weirdest thing I've ever put in anyone's ass. A man propositioned <laughs> me <laughs> and paid me to put a Nokia phone, like one of those, like not the even a flip bars? phone, like the not even. Bars. Like, yeah, like the old phones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, put it in his ass and just like call it. It's on vibrate. <laughs> yes. I, I, I had a hope. I had a hope. So on the man's ass and just like peed on him for an hour. Can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So when I was in high school, we would go on field trips and one of the people who would drive, this was one of my classmates' mothers, she would drive and every so often pick up her phone, push a couple buttons, and put it right back into her crotch. And I know I thought, and I'm sure everybody else thought, oh, she's just putting it back down into there for the vibration. Nope. <laughs> nah. Honestly, like... The amount of vibration that a phone gives off is not enough to be like it's stimulating it's not vibration for a clit. It's just not. <laughs> no, that's what a Hitachi's for. Oh, my Hitachi. <laughs> AKA my longest and healthiest relationship. <laughs> Those Bravo pagers would really do do something to your perineum if you. <laughs> Because, like, when I was in high school, I had a pager because I didn't have a... I wasn't staying in the same place every week, so I... They also had the belt clip, and they just, like... But, like, the school was like, oh, my God, gangs are going to take over the United States and form a political party or something. Sure. So, uh, I... So, we weren't allowed to have a pager, and so I crotched it. Yeah. And then... Yeah, and then my dad called me in the middle of geometry class. Like, oh, yes! Oh! (laughs) Two X! (laughs) So we've already talked about how at least the best there, I got, over the course of the streamathon <laughs> when I lost my job, Lauren lost her job just a couple of days before. So our relationship progressed quickly, which included her magic wand finding its way down towards my taint. That was weird. <laughs> but it's not the magic it's not the Hitachi anymore, it's just the magic wand. No, the good ones are. Oh well, yeah. If you if you go back and order from a back catalog somewhere, Magic Wand is a company now that has bought out or or spun off to have the rights. Since Hitachi is a serious maker of serious serious industrial products, massagers. Yeah, and it is it's, industrial. Oh yeah, yeah. It it, it itched. Really? Yeah. I mean, Violet Wands will itch a little bit. I think it's just like when people aren't used to that, like, because it is a very, very powerful vibration. A very powerful vibration, like slapping up against your balls a little bit. I could see, I could see why that would feel a little itchy. Is that why Marky Mark wrote that song? (laughs) (laughs) It would explain the happening. I'm just saying. What? No. No. (laughs) I had a chance to work on that movie and I turned it down. Like, I didn't even know what it was. I just knew it was a Shyamalan movie. And it's like, "Eh, no. So so I just did that. And Becky's behind me and she goes, The Happening? (laughs) She got, she's got, it's like, yep, everybody knows that one. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, the, the, the Penn pro, uh, Cinema Program usually has connections with anybody who's making a movie in Philadelphia, and Shyamalan always makes his movies in the general Philadelphia area. So my uh, cinema studies advisor sent out an email that's like, M. Night Shyamalan is looking for someone to make a documentary of the movie that he's making, and you'll get to go to 30th Street Station and be on a real live film set. It's like, yeah, but it's an M. Night Shyamalan film set. So. I'm honestly a little surprised that you don't like M. Night Shyamalan because I've gotten you into Neil Gaiman and I feel like M. Night Shyamalan's like addiction to plot twists 
is is very very similar to how Neil Neil Gaiman could could complete a plot twist. One I mean, of, it was like a yeah. full twist. Exactly. One of those two people actually completes it. One of them could actually write. Fair. Yeah, we're, we're, you know, the other one in the plot twist is, oh, he was from space the entire time. <laughs> what does this have to do with a movie about animated movie about gerbils? It's like it's, <laughs> it's 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 just it's there's a plot twist where there are clues and then it leads to some something and then uh, but the the Shyamalan plot twist as he went on just was like oh by the way here's the thing that doesn't need to the be movie. in the movie yeah the reason yeah. why it strikes me as kind of similar is just because with both cases I like am fucking blown out of the water because I feel like both of them foreshadow a specific plot twist and then just go nah fuck that here's this other completely <laughs> unrelated shit that you had no idea it was coming and you couldn't that- because we didn't give you any clue whatsoever but he does though that's the thing like how sh- far are you in trigger warning I, I haven't started that one yeah. yet but that's that's Tell not what I'm talking about I'm talking about Shyamalan oh, okay. like and because Shyamalan the Sixth Sense is still a brilliant movie. Like yeah. I, that plot twist was really well done. But like the reputation of always having a twist went to his head. I think Probably. because if you look at all the films he's made since then, he's been trying so hard to have that moment. Like he was dead the whole time, but it's been so unsuccessful. I mean, yeah. you have Lady in the Water, you have The Happening, you have Devil, and all the other shitty movies that he's made since then, and they just seem to be getting progressively funnier, unintentionally. <laughs> I just like to say his name is M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> Shyamalan Ding Dong. Yes, that's a good one. I always I, I enjoy that one too. Yeah. But at least at least Lady in the Water had Paul Giamatti. And right. If, if you take Paul Giamatti and put him in a bad movie, it's even more entertaining because uh, there's a comedian named James Adomian who does a phenomenal uh, Paul Giamatti impression, and I'll do my best best to recapture it. But he says he's like, he's always a balding Yale professor whose paper didn't get published. Be like, <laughs> and even in like John Adams, he's like, liberty will reign in America. What? Nobody? Great. Fuck. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Oh, so I guess I'm going to be the star of Lady in the Water. Yeah, I'm a writer that nobody likes. Par for the fucking course! <laughs> <laughs> then I'm going to go do this movie with Martin Lawrence, and it's going to be really hysterical. He's going to wear a fat suit and, you know, paint himself up. We're going to Cartersville, Georgia for three months. What do they fucking do? Yeah, it's funny. You know, though, uh, Paul Giamatti's favorite, my favorite movie of his is American Splendor. Mm. Uh, I mean, has anybody else seen that? It's been a while, but I've seen Harvey that. Picar. That, that was an awesome movie. Yeah. It, I, oh. It's been a while since I've seen it. I'm not saying Paul Giamatti's bad. I'm just saying he's been in some bad movies and it's kind of funny to watch him. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I, no, I, it's really entertaining when he's in a bad movie. I am completely <laughs> with you. And, but yeah, but he kind of saves it. When I think of them, I always think of John dies at the end, and it's <laughs> it's he just, a dead black it's man. just really, really interesting to think of Paul Giamatti as a black man. You know, <laughs> wasn't even blackface. Like I appreciate that. <laughs> very, very anti-blackface. No, it is an amazing movie. I don't watch things anymore. I, I watched like, it and then got really confused and have not rewatched it so that I would not be confused. <laughs> but Astrid, I just have to give you credit for taking such a moral stance in the year, in the year 2016 against the blackface thing. I mean, you are truly a, a visionary before your time, and I, I think that deserves to be commended here live on the air. That is phenomenal. Even Dick, you know I'm your social justice warrior, fairy godmother. Of course I am. <laughs> live on... Hangouts on air on YouTube Live, raising money for Leukemia Lymphoma Society. Light the night. Yep. yep. And Nokia's it's, up the butthole. It's that powerful. <laughs> yes. 
That should be our new subtitle. All right. So was it just the vibrate, or was the vibrate with the Nokia? I, I personally asked if it could be both, but he was against it. It was just the vibrate. <laughs> okay, I so hilarious. The, I really want to know what that ringtone sounds like from inside somebody's rectum. Right. Uh, yeah. He's not about that life. He just wanted it on vibrate. I, I was wondering if you could see the glow yeah. from in, you know his back. You could not. Oh. Okay, so the new hashtag is hashtag A N L T N hashtag Nokia up the butthole. <laughs> oh, your mother would be so proud. I'm on it. <laughs> it was Tucker who first pointed out the the anal Tennessee. Yeah, that's like I saw that. I'm like anal Tennessee, and and I was gonna keep it to myself because I don't want to start nothing, but. Okay. What was the uh, first one? A L T A N A N L T N L T N. Got it. Atheist nomads light the night. Got yep. it. And Honestly, despite all of this, we still have seven, yeah. eight viewers. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding? It's because of this that we still have yes, eight viewers. Yes, that's true. So oh okay, uh, was it Astro? Astrid. 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 Okay, so and I sent you a friend request. With with you being a a pro dom in the ex past, pro-dom. ex pro dom. When you were a pro dom, considering the fact that you look like a grand total of maybe barely twenty one at this point, was the fact that you were like an eighteen nineteen year old pro dom an aspect in people wanting you to dominate them? Not oh, only yeah. female, but very, very young. Oh yeah, Absol- absolutely. Um, sure, anytime. <laughs> part that's that's honestly like most of my mark, or that's most of my gimmick. The fact that I look so young, like even when I've got my hooker makeup on, I still like try to pull off the jailbait appeal a little bit. It's it's fucked up, but yeah, people are really, really, really into the fact that I look young. It's fucked up, but it pays the bills. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Morality doesn't pay the bills. Well, one one angle I've heard on this is if we can provide outlets for people who want jail bait or lower, and that keeps them from actually taking advantage of people who are actually jailbait or lower. Is that wrong? Or is that good? Um, I... How can I phrase this properly? People frequently think of sex workers as an outlet for people who society is like, hey... You're fucked up. And I'm not a fan. Like, um, I, I actually frequently hear it from Swerfs. And for those who didn't listen to the Swerf and Turf episode of our show, um, a Swerf is a sex worker exclusive radical feminist. Um, pretty much they're just feminists who think we've like betrayed our gender and are supporting patriarchy. A lot of people even will go as far as to think that we are providing a service as an outlet to like rapists and shit. So like anytime somebody wants us to be an outlet for people, society is cast away. I'm just like, no, most of the time when people hire sex workers, it's because they're really bad kissers. That's it. No, okay. That's- they have self-esteem issues or self-confidence issues. And they just feel like it's their only but- way. Honestly, like, the vast majority of my clients are old men, mostly veterans, um, who, like, picked up the habit while they were serving and just kept up with it. Um, Most of them widowers. The the one thing that, like, really connects all of them, though, because, like, some of them are attractive, some of them are charming, whatever. A couple of them are actually pretty funny. Um, The one thing that connects them all is that they're awful kissers, and I I think that's why they end up trying to purchase sex. It's, It's because, like, even when they do manage to find somebody who's into them, they'll just, like, try to swallow the partner's face, and they freak out and run away. 
But these aren't the kind of guys that people would think of as Johns. <clears throat> no, not usually. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Bad kissers. All right. They are all awful. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Good to know. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, this is the moment in an interview where I'd suggest that we uh, plug your podcast. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah, you, we Sam. We were too busy about Nokia's up the butthole. And <laughs> but, uh, Gosh, this... If you wanted a new podcast, that's the perfect name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping that for a band name. Unless yeah. you want it on iTunes. <laughs> That that should be a thing at some point. That's just going to be like me getting stoned and complaining about things. I I'll, for it in the future. I'll subscribe. <laughs> uh, we are the Inciting Incident Podcast. Uh, there's, you know, you're regularly on it. I'm always on it. I I'm the prime primary host. Yeah. Uh, Brian's on it pretty regularly. He had other plans tonight. And then we have Heather, Tony, and a couple other people who contribute here and there. We can be found at uh, incitingincident.libsyn.com or any of the podcast apps, uh, the iPhone one, iTunes, uh, Stitcher, Google Play, the whole bit. And, uh, yeah, I'm also a writer on lordsofpain.net, and I'm also writing my sixth book uh, on Patreon as well, which has been a unique experience. I thought it'd be fun to write a book chapter by chapter and have the patrons, like, give feedback as the book goes along rather than selling it once it's done. So that's been fun, too. That's and, awesome. And go Al, you recently got married, too, right? Yep. Uh, a month ago. Uh, what's today? The 20... Uh, a little over a month ago. Yeah. <laughs> so to continue to plug, um, if you've ever wanted to have your name featured in a book, if you've ever like, wanted to be a character book, that is actually a reward for supporting his novel on Patreon. <laughs> Check it out. Thank you. Well, if you ever want to put a Wesley in there for the hell of it, just <laughs> put it out there. That's what he named the I, phone. <laughs> yes. yes. Wesley the Nokia. <laughs> <laughs> so what uh, what were you doing in Seattle anyways? Never said. Um, I was getting laid and seeing sure. if I like liked it there as much as I think I would. And I do. That place is like my fucking like personal paradise. I want to move out there. Yep. Fucking love Seattle. Love yep. Washington you guys State. Move out. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I was mostly getting laid. Yeah. That, that was the majority of the trip. <laughs> well, I'll getting tell you what, stoned if you guys to getting laid. Sometime, Yep. You guys come out sometime. We will take you to a place and have a buffalo lick your face as you're trying to squirm away. <laughs> squim. That's not a euphemism. It's That's, really not a euphemism. It's, it's yeah. a place called Squim, a desert on the Olympic Peninsula. It, you can see Canada from from like the waters. Edge. All right, Sarah Palin. Fuck yeah. <laughs> you can see. I didn't say Russia. I said Canada. <laughs> goddamn it. You can see Canada, and it gets Same. ten inches of rain a year. It's this weird rain shadow spot with a yeah, bunch of, of awesome of animals, and you can touch yaks and buffalo. That sounds fucking phenomenal. I'll definitely be trying to head back to Seattle soon, you know, for more, like, BDSM and weed. So I'll <laughs> definitely hit you guys up while I'm out there. Well, I sent you a friend request, so let's chat. Phenomenal. Yeah. Anyways, um... And there's awesome. Becky. Y'all are all right. Yeah, we got fucking. Well, they have Becky's real girlfriends behind, behind you. Yeah. yeah. Job. You want me on? You, yeah, you want to tag in? Dressed in my t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It's awfully cute. The apple seeds are awesome. <laughs> Hi, Becky. Oh my God, that's the go. cutest sweater ever. Tapping out. Bye, boy, boy, boy. Bye. Oh, I don't think we put it out recently. This is um, got some apple. Yeah, this is his booze dispenser. <laughs> That's just crazy. I, it works. Yeah. Good for shots. Apple pie booze. Oh God! Ah, the end of the world. Oh, sorry. Isn't that the top of the hour? Yeah, it's so yeah. perky. End of the world. Hi, Becky. Okay, so inciting incident. Thank you very much for joining us. We are at the end of your hour, so thank you very much. You don't have to leave, but you are no longer the focus of attention. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, hey, you can't I'm, stay here. 
I got so, food, so uh, yeah, we've yep. got to go eat so that we can try to get drunker than you guys. Yeah, oh, okay. That'll so, take some doing, if. Uh... Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find show notes and contact information at atheistnomads.com. Follow us on Twitter at Atheist Nomads. And like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash atheistnomads. Please subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcatcher of choice. And while you're there, feel free to leave us a review. Theme music is courtesy of Sturdy Fred. Until next time, this has been the Atheist Nomads.